Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. I would like to introduce you Fridolin uh, Pokorny from Red Hat, who will present about the uh, Linux kernel TLS module. Let's welcome Fridolin. So, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation about AFK TLS, Address Family Kernel Transport Layer Security. And uh, I will introduce you a Linux kernel that does TLS and DTLS, to be more precise, parts of TLS and DTLS right inside the Linux kernel. So before we start, let's look at uh, TLS and DTLS in a nutshell. So TLS stands for Transport Layer Security, whereas DTLS stands for Datagram Transport Layer Security. You are probably familiar with uh, the abbreviation SSL, that is some kind of historical naming. Now the proper naming is TLS. And the current version that is used is uh, version 1.2. We have a draft that describes version 1.3 and introduces a lot of cool stuff, such as zero round trip times. So you basically uh, send your data within uh, negotiation. And it also restricts some ciphers and, and so on. It's still a draft, so uh, it's not used. You can find GNU TLS and OpenSSL. These are the most widely used implementations. You can find, for example, LibreSSL but, or other, other libraries as well, but all of these are mostly forked from OpenSSL to have some vulnerabilities. So if you look at the TLS and DTLS protocol, we can distinguish two layers. One is the control layer that basically does uh, all the overhead that is needed for TLS and DTLS. So you can find messages like, I want to negotiate keys, or I want to uh, shut down the communication, or I want to do rekeying because I think my, my uh, connection got compromised. On the other hand, the record layer is used for sending data, encrypted data. So if you are sending some data using TLS or DTLS, they are sent in the record layer. The main difference between TLS and DTLS is that TLS requires the underlying protocol to be secure uh, or reliable. So you have to uh, use it with uh, protocols such as TCP. On the other hand, DTLS does not have such requirements, so you can use it with UDP. But this also means that implementing DTLS is not that straightforward or it's harder in some way because you have to keep some additional information. This information is basically a sequence number and you construct some uh, window in your, in your implementation. You can find many usages of TLS and DTLS. For example, HTTPS, that is protocol HTTP secured, so uh, no one sees your communication. It's also used in the email. Uh, probably less known usages are, for example, HA proxy, that is high availability proxy, that is a load balancer uh, for HTTPS uh, communications. You can also find usages in uh, SSL-based VPNs. The term SSL-based VPNs is uh, quite used because of historical naming. You can also say TLS-based VPNs. And such VPNs are OpenConnect or Cisco AnyConnect. Cisco AnyConnect is a closed source implementation, uh, but you, you can use OpenConnect that is, uh, that is compatible with Cisco AnyConnect. And let's focus some, on some scenarios with OpenConnect. So let's say we have a client that communicates with some uh, device that is located on a local, ne or local area network. And let's say uh, that the communication is already established. So uh, there is no handshake, we are just sending data. What needs to be done on the cli client side? A client needs to first encrypt data that needs to be sent it. So it issues encrypt. It also adds information that are related to TLS uh, protocol itself. So there's added uh, header and tag for integrity. And once we have the TLS record or the TLS record, we uh, write this TLS record into the kernel, and the kernel then transparently sends this uh, record to a remote server, uh, and it uses media uh, media that, that is used for the communication. On the server side, server uh, in the kernel 
kernel receives the record, and once the record is ready, uh, there's an open connect server that listens on some particular port and has a socket. And once there's already the TLS or the TLS record, it reads it from the kernel, it decrypts it, basically it does the reverse operation of uh, then the client. Once the record is uh, decrypted, it removes, uh, removes uh, TLS or DTLS specific uh, information from the record. So it removes header and tag. It also checks the integrity so no one uh, change something on the wire when we was when we were sending a TLS record. Once this once this is done, then uh, we the OpenConnect server writes uh, raw data into the kernel and routes it to desired device. If you see if you if we look at this particular scenario, we can see that the decryption is done in user space. If we move decryption to the kernel we could optimize it some way. What is the optimization? Basically, we saved two context switches because we are no longer required to do write and read operation syscalls just to read data from the kernel and write just to uh, send data. And we also saved two copies. We are no longer required to copy data from the kernel to user space and from user space to memory that is allocated in the kernel for the socket. So this was how AFK TLS was born. AFK TLS is a kernel module, so it sits in the kernel, and it does uh, TLS and DTLS communication for you. It introduces new socket type. It's called AFK TLS, Address Family Kernel Transport Layer Security, and it implements the record layer of TLS and DTLS protocols. That means when you want to use AFK TLS, you uh, use your OpenSSL or GNU TLS library for, for instantiating the connection. So you do a handshake with the remote, and once you have a proper session, you pass all the key material into the kernel, and AFK TLS does everything for you. So you use AFK TLS socket to write raw data and read from, uh, raw, raw data. Uh, it currently supports only ASJCM, but it could be extended using, for example, Chacha Poly. And uh, it implements most of the socket operations, such as uh, socket for instantiating the socket, bind, send, receive, write, uh, and such. You can also do uh, advanced uh, syscalls like send file or splice. The only uh, syscall that is not implemented is uh, connect. When I was designing API, it didn't make much sense to implement such, such syscall. If we look at the optimization, we wanted to save two context switches, but this is not possible because there's no, there's no syscall in a Linux kernel that would say, hey, everything that is received from this socket, source socket, uh, sent to a destination socket. We can simulate something like this using send file, which basically operates on two file descriptors. So if you want to save uh, send a uh, file using AFK TLS, you can do it, or any static content that sits on your, on your disk. If we look at the implementation of, of send file, it is implemented of, on top of splice, that is another syscall that operates on a file descriptor or socket and uses some intermedia structure that uh, carries basically information about uh, memory that is allocated inside the kernel, so in the kernel space, but you point uh, to this memory from user space. Such structure is called pipe. On the other hand, we, we didn't save two context switches, but on the other hand, we saved two copies. So we are no longer required to copy data from user space to kernel space, and vice versa, uh, just to do decryption. Uh, when I was implementing uh, AFK TLS, there were issues with padding, for example that uh, also affects the optimization. If we look at the TLS record, you can see that there are some header and then there are three bytes that are not used. So everything that follows is, is basically shifted by three bytes. This has a uh, negative impact because you, don't, you cannot access uh, to, to aligned um, memory in the kernel. If we compare it to, uh, for example, IPsec, IPsec has uh, eight bytes, and then 
there follow eight bytes just uh, for reserved. They, they are just reserved. If we look at the DTLS record, you can see that the sequence number uh, is carried uh, within the DTLS record, but we still have three bytes. If we look at the optimization results, we have uh, benchmarks of user send. That means you use GNU TLS send or OpenSSL send. So you do encryption in the user space and you pass the encrypted record to the kernel. Uh, in this particular scenario, uh, the send file operation was uh, faster by 10% in average. Uh, we also benchmark it using MMAP, so we mapped wall file into the memory uh, in the user space. We encrypted it and sent it use, using user send. Uh, if we look at the, uh, the AFK TLS usages, there are various. One is uh, open connect, as, as discussed in this presentation. Uh, the main disadvantage why this implementation was not used is because the TuneTap device uh, is, that is used by OpenConnect does not support splice operation. Uh, you can use AFK TLS with KC KCM, that is uh, the kernel multiplexer. AFK TLS has also advantages because you can access raw data right inside your kernel. You can uh, do, for example, Linux socket filtering or Barclay socket filtering if you want. You can also use, for example, eBPF. And uh, another cool feature is, for example, BCC implementation, where you can plug your function uh, right behind some function that is called in the kernel or after it. Uh, and you write, uh, basically, Python code. Then the eBPF uh, checker checks your code. And the code is imp uh, then the code is, is uh, executed in the kernel. Uh, another very nice usage is uh, basically CPU offloading, where you don't do the encryption and decryption in, on your CPU, but you have specialized hardware that deals with this. And uh, there are possible improvements in this area. So you, for example, pass multiple TLS records and multiple IV vectors, and you do, do the decryption uh, like in burst mode. Currently, the crypto is not, uh, does not support uh, such, but there's an opportunity to do that and uh, to use AFK TLS with such uh, use cases. Uh, TLS in the kernel is not novel. There are implementations. For example, Solaris has its KTLS. It's not uh, only the record layer, but it also carries uh, the implementation of uh, the control layer. So uh, it implements wall TLS and DTLS right inside the kernel. Uh, this implementation was not that successful uh, because you have to maintain more than just IP, uh, IP address and port. You have to deal with certificates and such. And um, it works like a proxy between two ports. So we, for example, you can uh, send uh, encrypted communication to 443 port and read it from 80 ports in uh, raw. For example, Netflix uh, experimented with something similar as AFK TLS. The implementation is not publicly available. They modified BSD, BSD kernel and they adopted SSL uh, to use the send file operation and they use it according to articles that they published they use it for serving static content. We at Red Hat, we experimented with AFK TLS. Uh, Facebook joined us, they, they sent us cool patches and uh, they are experimenting with it as well. You can find AFK TLS on GitHub and uh, feel free to use it, it's open. You can uh, plug it to your kernel. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to recompile your kernel and uh, patch uh, the ASJCM implementation to, to be used with AFK TLS. And you have to also uh, add the socket type because you cannot uh, just plug a, plug a new uh, socket uh, or module that implements new socket type into the kernel. So you have to manually add to the list of supported, uh, supported sockets uh, to your kernel module. So thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Any questions? We have plenty of time. <laughs>
Um, thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, do you have any idea of when this will be included in uh, normal Linux kernel? Obvious question, maybe. Um, we have still open issues, like, for mm -hmm. example, DTLS window has some bugs uh, right now, and we haven't proposed uh, the merge request yet, but hopefully we get it someday. There are also, uh, Facebook is, is experimenting with having only one socket, so you don't need to have uh, the socket for TCP and AFK TLS, but they want to merge it in some way, and hopefully one day. So. Um, I guess your client software, which does the handshake, uh, also has to be patched, right? Um, no. no? Uh, uh, there's also uh, there's available API. So if you are using, for example, GNU TLS, you just ask uh, after the handshake for all the key materials. So you pass uh, uh, basically keys and uh, IV vector to the kernel for sending and receiving, and that's it. Ah, and how does this communication work uh, between uh, user space and kernel? Uh, you have to maintain this in, in, your, in your code by your own. There's no support of AFK TLS in GNU TLS. So you, when you are using, for example, GNU TLS, you do the negotiation and then you ask for, for the key material. You instantiate AFK TLS and you pass all the key material to, to AFK TLS and it transparently does everything for you. Ah, thanks. So there's a lot of hard questions that TLS clients have to sort of answer when they want to establish a connection. Um, um, so I, I suppose there needs to be some way of communicating with the, with the kernel's TLS implementation. So what's the sort of strategy there? Do you, do you use yachtels to accept sort of requests or to, to sort of uh, leak information to the user space back so that the user space can make decisions? Uh, I'm not sure if I follow the question. Like, can you can you rephrase it? So, when you establish ATLS connections, you you, you may want as as a client, you may want to uh, uh, react uh, upon the behavior of of the server, right? You, you you may want to be informed of certain 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 things that the server does, and you uh, in that case you, you need to well pass some information to the, to the TLS library, which in this case seems to be the, in, in the kernel. So, so you need to have some, some way to communicate about the, communi about the channel uh, with the uh, connection established in user space. So, so what's the strategy there? Uh, once you instantiate properly the session, you have all the key and you pass the key material to AFK TLS, you can use the record layer just to, to send and receive raw data, uh, to send and receive data, and you get uh, unencrypted data in user space. The only issue here is when you want to, for example, when your opponent uh, wants to negotiate new keys, then the kernel has to, has to know some, some way how to tell, hey, user space, I have to, I have to negotiate new keys, so we return uh, some kind of value. Uh, that is the error state, and then you have to ask a kernel for, for the key material in order to, to proceed with, for example, negotiation of new keys. And then again, you have to use OpenSSL or GNU TLS for that. And if you want to use AFK TLS again, then you have to ask, uh, ask the information from, AFK t uh, from GNU TLS or OpenSSL. Okay, but how, how would I, for example, validate the X509 certificate if any was sent. I mean, because that, that's probably, I, I want to do that in user space nonetheless, right? Because the application wants to have tight control over where it's connecting to. Uh -huh. So in that case, you probably need to switch back. You, you need to inform me as, as the, the client, sort of as, as the user space about, uh, in, in this case, the X509 identity. And, and then I need to, to tell the, the kernel back whether I want to continue with the, with the connection or not. Uh -huh. So X509 is, is uh, done in user space. So right. user space uh, handles this. And once you, you, you instantiate the connection, everything, you already know that the opponent is, is correct in this way. So we do only symmetric encryption in the kernel, in AFK TLS. Ah, OK. Right. So, so the handshaking is not done by? No, no, no. Oh, OK, sorry. I'm, OK, good. Any other questions?
Okay, um, so my question is, you said you have roughly 10% um, performance benefit, right? Did you look into what is the major issue, why it's not more than that, because the en encryption itself takes so much resources already? I mean, it's like a trade-off also regarding com complexity, right? Um, um, basically, AFK TLS was my uh, master thesis. You can find some benchmarks here. And we, we benchmark it on, uh, on Intel architecture. And we, the first idea was, OK, maybe the context switch is, is quite expensive. But we found out that the context switch, switch is not that expensive. And the most time is spent on, on encryption and decryption itself. So uh, you would probably want to use, for example, CPU offloading. So you have dedicated uh, device just for encryption and decryption and you have free CPU. Okay. And my other question, or just curious, uh, when you use memory mapped I.O., I mean, don't you still have to copy inside the kernel the data to some other buffer, because otherwise you can still write into it from user space while the kernel <laughs> works on it? Uh, with mmap, you do, you do copying. So uh, that was basically some kind of way how we could optimize or uh, compare it with, with uh, send file. It seems that the objective is to reduce the kind of context switch and copy. It's, it seems to be variable only in certain use case, like a uh, front end uh, that is uh, for forwarding its, uh, its uh, packets to uh, other uh, servers. And uh, in this case, how uh, is managed the forwarding uh, to be included in staying into the kernel without copy. Is it part of uh, this uh, module, or is it some other mechanism that I don't know? Uh, if, you do, if you do something like forwarding between, between two sockets, uh, you can do this splice, uh, splice optimization when you, for example, receive encrypted communication on one socket, and you don't copy the content to, to user space but you issue two splice calls and you don't have uh, raw data in user space. So that's, that was the main optimization of, for, for Open Connect, and it's also applicable for, for HA proxy. So you have to, the logic of, of uh, basically uh, forwarding, you have to ke keep it in your application. Okay, let's thank uh, Fridolin again.